Okay, I'd like to bring to order the uh, council meeting <coughs> for May 15th. Can we start with the pledge of the flag? <coughs>
And we are so fortunate to have had somebody <coughs> win. This is the first time in Atherton somebody has actually won an award. He took third place. And your picture is up here. Did you want to talk about it a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you know, so anyway, congratulations on taking third Sorry. place in the Trash to Art contest uh, and by creating your unique art piece, DJ Trash Go. So we have a certificate for you, and we do appreciate you coming tonight. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Right, right, right. Cross the school district. Yeah. All right, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. You did a good job. Yeah, <laughs> Session meetings, the city attorney will report. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, city council met in closed session. Two items. The first, public employee performance evaluation. The city manager and the council discussed and took no action. The second item, the conference with the labor negotiator uh, and the agency negotiator, George Roderick, city manager, discussed uh, the issues with the city council again. Council gave direction to the city manager with respect to negotiations. Okay. All right. City manager's report, item number six. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and uh, members of the council. We have a report before you this evening. Staff is here to answer any questions you might have. With respect to the Civic Center project, it was a very exciting day. Uh, we uh, dropped the first set of three trailers into the park. They were supposed to be here between 6 and 6.30 this morning. Uh, unfortunately, they uh, sent us some messages and we're going to be here until 10 or 10.30 this morning. And then they actually showed up about, what time, Marty? 11.45. 11.45. Mm -hmm. Right about the time that Knox Play School was doing their transition oh. uh, for kids back and forth. So that made it even more exciting. So we, had, we brought them in the main entryway and then they had to go through the circular driveway around in order to get to their spot to go. So they at least cleared the path, so to speak, for the next sets of trailers that are coming in next week. <coughs> With that, we're happy to answer any other questions that council might have. How many trailers? A total of six. Well, three today. Three today. Three today, three today. Okay. yeah. And that's going to house? Uh, permit center. Yeah, the permit okay. center, so building, that's planning, first set. admin, finance, et cetera. But the three today are for building. And all the electrical and things off? It's being worked on right now. Progress. Okay. <laughs> We don't actually move in until the end of the month. Right. So. Okay. Right. Any other questions for George? Go ahead. So your report included a section on the 20A, Rule 20A fund, mm -hmm. and you noted that uh, the PUC made this uh, unexpected decision regarding the city of Live Oak, mm -hmm. and, <coughs> and you had some advice for us, but my question was, does that decision by the PUC use up all of the uh, funds for all of the unused work credits among cities in California, or? No, no, so it, it, it's allocated out to the different agencies. We only lost 7,000 of our one point uh, so something. Like that. If, so one of the options was to create an undergrounding district ordinance that would expire in some, at some point. And we've contemplated doing this along um, uh, Fair Oaks Lane. Uh, if we were to pass an ordinance uh, establishing that district. Would that save our 7,000? Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure it's worth it, but. Right. but <coughs> I don't know, Robert, what, what's your take on that? Um, if we had 
gone through the process to do that, it would, um, being that we would have had an active district, it would take us off the inactive list and we would not lose money. But there is a process to do that, and at this point, it, it's uh, a little longer than, than 90 days, and so we'll likely lose that money. <coughs> I'm going to say this is the first time I've seen them act this way, um, but I think that they've started a process in which they are looking at the use of Rule 28, mm -hmm. Rule 28 funds, mm -hmm. and it is likely that the program is, as they go through their process over the next year or two, they are likely going to change the Rule 28 program in different ways. And so um, we have the opportunity to either create a district mm -hmm. or, as written in the report, we can look at um, exchanging those credits with another agency that might be uh, more active in utilizing them. So, yeah. We talked about that. Yeah. yeah. We've only got a small percentage of the funds. Uh, so, 30%. It's somewhere between 30 and 50 percent, depending on the market. But if if uh, if we made a district, mm -hmm. and then we said, well, we want to do this project, would they consider? Do you believe that, given what they're doing for Live Oak, that we would get other people's things without having to buy them, their 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 funds without having to buy them to cover our additional costs? Um, in what I read about the Live Oak, it was an extenuating circumstance in which they were utilizing not just the funds that they had, they borrowed forward, they tried to acquire, and um, in essence, they are going beyond the five-year limit, which is the typical borrow. And to fund that, the PUC is taking li little bits and pieces from agencies that are not active in utilizing their but credits. That's, that, that's exactly Bill's question. Right. If, yeah. if we were to do the same, um, the reason we didn't go forward and establish that district, <coughs> we looked at the possibility of putting the lines underground from the train tracks up to the end of our parcel on uh, Fair Oaks was because we didn't have quite enough funds to do it, including the five-year borrow ahead. But if we were to establish it, I think, as Robert mentioned, that's, this is the first time in all of our experience with Rule 28 funds in underground districts that we've seen this actually occur. Right. It's something maybe we should ask pg and &E, is that if we were to establish a district, were to borrow ahead five years and still couldn't, couldn't make the cost of that district work, what are our options? <coughs> Dave's familiar with it. I mean, uh, West Bay's replacing the sewer main on El Camino. The permit is under Caltrans for working on El Camino. Um, there are some impacts that have happened on our local streets, um, including some damage that we're going to be seeking that they repair. Uh, just the so. lack of notification, and, you know, just poorly handled all the way around, and, and they need to coordinate. We need to figure out a way to get coordination better. 
Yeah, unfortunately, the state is not the best at coordinating with local jurisdictions in terms of the permit activities that they authorize. What would you recommend that the residents who have been um, impacted contact the head of the West Bay Sanitation District, who's Fran Dean? Well, it all depends because on what they Because they're, they're yeah. the ones who contracted, didn't they? They did. So I would, I would recommend that Fran Dean, <coughs> who's also the the head of the Chamber of Commerce in Menlo Park, right at the train station, that people should go down there and see him. Certainly a recommendation. That's a suggestion. I hear some resident others. <laughs> I didn't say well, we'll give the council an update on who we can find out from West Bay on staff. Yeah, like, yeah. Okay. Oh, well. Yeah. Have a, I have a yeah. For the mayor, I have one little comment okay, uh, that I should have brought to the city manager. Uh, on um, page, oh, page numbers. Uh, it's in the public works update. There was a before and after picture of that moon leads from the Bell Maple Leaf Island. I was just wondering if the before should be, if they should be switched because the before looks better than the after. <laughs> <laughs> Great comment. I'm just <laughs> comment noted. <laughs> comment noted. Okay. Um, on the uh, in the in the minutes section of your report, there was the fire district item, and um, I brought up to George that uh, I thought that the. Recounting of what was said at the meeting, especially some important things that were highlighted in the papers, uh, weren't adequately identified, and we might want to have them minuted in some manner, just that it was said and by whom, um, as we move forward with the fire district discussions. I don't know if we would like to have that shown now. Consent calendar, a couple of minutes, I don't yeah, for the January 22nd minutes, there was a suggestion that we add the comments from board member Solano and feedback from a couple of the council members. We can go back and look at the record, amend the minutes before they're signed if the council wishes to do that. I think that's a good, uh, it's a good suggestion. Idea. Because the minutes are what memorializes the meetings, although a lot of minutes are just action items, action minutes and not detailed minutes because everything's on video. So that definitely mobilizes it. Yeah. Well, we'll pull the minutes yeah. from that approval this evening, yeah. and we'll amend them and then bring them back. Yeah. But the person who said that keeps saying he didn't say that. So well, it'd be nice to refresh my memory. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, th this is a new thing. Um, yeah, so I think the hazardous materials programs that you're referring to include like lead abatement and asbestos abatement, uh -huh, uh -huh. and those are governed by direct state regulation. Mm -hmm. And so when somebody's demolishing a building, they test those items, mm -hmm. and they have to have certified contractors to deal with them. Mm -hmm. uh, as part of our regional stormwater permit, um, the regional board tasks all of the permittees to come up with a way of managing PCBs during building demolition. Um, and as outlined in the report, there's a certain type of construction in a certain window where buildings may have been constructed or remodeled, where items like caulking and other things yeah. used PCBs. Yes. Um, and so the concern is, is that during building demolition, these things become airborne and then deposit themselves on the roadways and other things and end up in the waterways. Mm -hmm. um, so um, 
the San Mateo County program along with the other programs throughout the, the region uh, work together to develop a, a you know a, a format and a program standardized worksheets had public outreach <coughs> with um, not just the jurisdictions on how to do it but also with um, the construction industry and so um, they had uh, several workshops for the public to participate as the program was being developed. This program is, uh, beneficially, this program is consistent with everybody in the area. So if somebody, a demolition contractor, comes to one agency versus another, they're mm -hmm. doing the same thing. Okay. So I guess that was my follow-up question, is that the ordinance and things that we're going to sign here, um, is this more or less a template? Of That's correct. It's pretty much Bay Area wide. So resolution. Resolution. Sorry. Yeah. That's what I'm on the same channel, we already do monitoring. They just added, in essence, the layer of the onion of PCBs because all of this is just another layer of protection, and this is just another guideline to implement the building. Yeah. So we will have to. This is a new thing for us to implement. Okay. Great. I'm okay. fine. Are there any other questions about items on the consent calendar that people wish to pull? There's only three, I, I know. Motion to approve. No, no, no. We haven't asked the public. No, sorry. Any members of the public wish to discuss items 8 through 10, which is the approval of the minutes, approval of committee <coughs> bills and claims, and the resolution on PCB management that we just discussed? Seeing none, no. there are public comments. Then we have a Motion to approve. Oh, yes. As, Second. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. As we move along, we're going to be seconds of the minutes, right? Right. Yeah. Yes. Right. Okay. No, that's all right. Okay. All, right. Okay. 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 all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay, good. All right, we'll go to item 11. Item 11, George. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. Item number 11 is. Is approve of a resolution governing town committees, setting a distribution of staggered terms, and adjusting the committee charter and membership detail as deemed appropriate by the council. Uh, at the at a prior meeting, the council discussed ways to stagger the terms of the various committee members. So, in this resolution, I added, for example, in 2019, staggering one term for this particular committee. In 2020, you would stagger two terms. It provides the mechanism to do that when you come to appointment in June for each of the respective committees. The only committee that I did not make an adjustment to uh, or make a suggestion for was the Public <coughs> Center Advisory Committee. The council has had comment, conversation in the past about that the council itself is a more involved body at this point, so is there a need to actually continue the Civic Center Advisory Committee moving forward? That's a pleasure of the council. You can either add staggered terms to the resolution or expand the committee or whatever the council so chooses to do this evening. With that, staff's recommendation is you adopt the resolution as is presented. Good comments on the Civic Center Advisory Committee. Anybody have any questions? I have, I have a clarifying question. Sure. Um, uh, so when you say that you would stand So you actually made the greater number 
shorter rather than the greater number longer. And was that intentional? Or no, it, it just sort of happened. It just sort of happened that way, yeah. I was trying to figure out how to do 10 members out of it. Yeah, you know, that was the most complicated yeah. one for sure. one of the commitments that um, council originally made with the CCAC committee was that um, if there were going to be significant changes in the change order, change order yeah, change, changes, change orders in the um, design uh, that the CCAC committee would be uh, consulted once we would be going forward. And I'm not anticipating that because I think that our design is uh, pretty well set and we've got a good uh, construction uh, bid on it. We've got some good um, construction uh, professionals and Marty and Robert are going to be over, watching over everything.
Jumpstart, Rose Howe, Clyde as an outside advisor. You know, they're, they're real um, industry professionals, and I think they, uh, with that small group, they could be used uh, very helpful to the Civic Center to give advice and recommendation to the council if a huge change was being made without having to convene the entire city center committee. Uh, so uh, maybe that would be uh, an alternative. And we could pull them together just as an Very quickly. Right, I mean, they want to meet. They could just the mayor would have to. Yeah, the uh, mayor would pull that together. Be able to have to do that. Um, just because I can't resist, I'm going to repeat that I think this is a staggeringly good idea. <laughs> Um, the, uh, <laughs> I, I know, dumb joke. But anyway, the, um, <laughs> oh, you're referring to the staggering turn. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Every time you explain a joke, it's a good one, isn't it? Yeah. 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 The, uh, <laughs> the, uh, uh, so my, my, I thought it was great. This great suggestion. It was a great suggestion. I thought it's been well implemented. Mm -hmm. To the extent there's been um, two issues that have kind of come up, my thought of rail committees actually would. Um, would move the early front load the committee so that the turnover because I think I think fresh blood would be a good idea in that committee and, and so that'd be. But so that's different from. Yeah, the that's fine. That's fine. I'm just, yeah. uh -huh. um, and then with regards to the civic center advisory committee, I, I do think it's important that the council be as actively involved in it as it can, and I think um, there's a couple of dynamics that could come into play. One of which is um, that. that when two council members are full, totally involved in everything, the others sometimes feel like they're not quite as involved in what's going on. So if we reach the point where it's, it's okay for the full council here, that'd be my preference from that standpoint. And I like the idea of the interested people who've been involved for years and the, the committee continue, I mean, for the, the, the community. Group. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. or however we want to define yeah. it. Still be consulted and we can figure out a mechanism for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's, I think it's better. So um, my two cents is, first off, I, I like the staggering. I think it was a, a great observation, great uh, that you put forward. I can go either way. Uh, on the rail committee, I, it would be nice to get some additional people, newer people on the committee. Um, however, I, I don't know if there are people waiting to get on it. So, um, yeah, so I that, don't think there's a limit to it. Well, we've added people. Oh, it's ten. Yeah, I think it's ten. It's, it's ten. We put, yeah. a number we put a limit on it. Yeah. Oh, that's um, <laughs> With regards to the CCAC, you know, I want to make sure, from my perspective, I think everything needs to come back at this point in time. That's that staff doesn't feel as you know yeah. needs to have our view. I think we've got a great staff that's looking at this, and that are very knowledgeable and and have been working with this uh, as well. And I think that. that you know, they need to bring it back to the council. Um, the PMC, uh, you know, of course, there's really only Rose Howe now. Uh, you know, Clive doesn't live here. Dee Dee doesn't live here. Steve, uh, you know, I've, I've heard that maybe he's going to move or start living in Palo Alto. Um, and so, well, well, could be, he may not be a resident. He may be, I don't know. but. Uh, you know, I, I don't see a need for this, it, but if we need to have people come back and look at stuff, we can always ask them to come back on an ad hoc basis. But I don't personally think that we need to continue with that committee, as, as was suggested by Carrie. Okay. So, so my direction, rail committee, would you like it as it's written? So that it presents the shorter terms in advance, opportunity for turnover. Uh, with the CCAC, that one would be expanded so we write that out. The staff has the ability to use the PMC as we need it. Yeah, on an, as an ad hoc. Right. And um, and, the, and, and the people, yeah, and the people that are on the committee, we need to generate letters to them and, and uh, we'll get that sent out so yes. that they they put in a lot of time and, and they need to be recognized and thanked appropriately. Absolutely. What does the prior approval, I must have missed one, I think I was chatting with the city attorney, apologies. 
prior approval for use of the PMC. If you feel it's something that it needs to go back to the PMC, then you would come back and let us know that. That, that, that it occurred, or that you used them, or that uh, that you want that you need them, that you want them, that you need them. Council has control. Do we need a resolution to change the uh, terms? Uh, that you're to be adopting a resolution this evening with the modification we just talked about. Yeah. As soon as it goes out to the public. Are there any public comments on this item? I saw a hand go up. I know you care about it. I just saw it. We're serious. This is like an option. All right, close public comments. Uh, so we have a motion. Uh, so move. Yes. <coughs> okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. We'll move on. Number 12 uh, is the RFP for the procurement assistance for the solid waste and recycling services item that we discussed uh, a month ago. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the Council, as the Mayor indicated, you spoke about this at the last Council meeting. We've since crafted that RFP to release. We have about three firms that we would release it to at this point, plus we release it on the open market to target those three firms uh, for procurement assistance for solid waste and recycling services. I don't know what the cost would be, but I, I, I have a hazard of guess it'd be between 30 and 50, like I mentioned before. And we would use the um, solid waste grid stabilization funds uh, to pay for it. With that, staff recommends approval of the RFP and offer us a Any questions for George? Yes. I'd like to say, um, I just want to confirm from before we talked, you said you did not have to take a tremendous amount of time. No, it's not a tremendous amount of time, but with any contract, with contract management, staff would also participate in any public meetings or public engagement opportunities with the community and interviews with any haulers or bidders on the contract. So that staff time is baked in, um, and it's an additional responsibility uh, above whatever else is going on presently. But I wouldn't call it significant.
really should be at least equal to the understanding of the project issues, or uh, maybe say 45 percent, and the understanding of the project issues at 35 percent, um, and then the quality of the work proposed plan, you know, 10 and 10. I don't know. It just seems like the um, firm's qualifications Wait, should be. Wait, you want to move 5 percent? say they're very qualified, they're going to have references that need to be down in the reference. Yeah. Um, well, I'm open to other, you know, to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. I just think that, you know, you know how when we were trying to evaluate <coughs> and, and right. other things. And for the master plan. Master plan, yeah. But that was evaluating the people that were going to do the work. This is just hiring somebody of a limited number of people that will go out and prepare the RFP. Just that the first two criteria are pretty closely related to the firm's mm -hmm. um, qualifications and the firm's and their understanding of the project. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm happy with the 4535. Yeah. How about 4535? Yeah. 42 and a half. 45 percent and 50%. That's a big difference. All right, but you're saying 45 for the firm qualifications. That's no, she's saying 35 for the current qualification. Fine. We're just moving 5%. Five percent. That's great. No problem. Sounds great. I'm fine. All right. All right. Any other comments? I agree with you. Do we need a motion? Yes, we're going to have a motion as amended, right? Yeah, so moved. Second. Second. Fine. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Moving on. Next is the resolution for uh, the town to approve the, the SBWMA moving forward uh, to issue uh, refinancing of bonds and additional bonds to raise an additional $20 million. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of the Council, this is a uh, detailed staff report that was, again, mostly provided by the SBWMA. They wanted a model report for each agency to adopt. That's where this report came from. Uh, but in, in, in basic, as the mayor stated, the SPWMA is looking to refund and refinance their long-term bond obligations and then add to that a, an amount of uh, $10 million, I believe, uh, and then use some $5 million aside and do some improvements. Uh, so, yeah, so 15 and then 5, so a total of 20, to make some improvements. The town, as a member of the SPWMA, would have a financial obligation toward that debt based on our share. Uh, which is somewhere around three or so percent, uh, plus or minus. And so the question before the town this evening is adopting this resolution, supporting the refinancing of those bonds. The SBWMA needs eight of its member agencies to do this, and I believe at this point they already have that. Uh, the county and the town are the, the two agencies that are kind of out there uh, as a question of whether we approve it. Given our, our most recent item for the procurement services and the process we're going through for that, the council's options are to adopt this resolution and support the refinancing for the SBWMA, continue it into uh, the future until such time as we make a decision on what we want to do, or not adopt it this evening and just uh, vote no. So it's the uh, pleasure of the council. Any questions for George? So I understand that whether we adopt it or not makes no difference. The fact that eight of the twelve have already approved it, as soon as the bonds are issued, then our liability goes up. Right. My, my, who we vote for it or not? Correct. 
Yeah, my uh, having sat in through as both a member of the finance committee and as a, a member of the board, um, it's a smart thing to redeem the bonds. The bonds, the current bonds that are out there are are paying six percent, and so uh, and the window for refinancing them uh, is the next six to seven months. Um, so we have till the end of the year to get that done. Um, at that time, also, uh, the staff at the SBWMA said, let's go ahead and let's get additional money so that we can go ahead and, um, and get the money to finance some of the capital improvements that they want. At the same time they were doing that, they also have identified the fact that they, they have a, what's called a grant farm, which is a corporation that helps find grants to help finance the same things that they're asking for the money for. So, um, so one of my questions as a member of the board was, well, if we're getting the grants, why do we need the money? Do we need all the money that we're asking for? You know, and so, um, so that's a question for us. Now my feeling is, is that if we choose to go with a different hauler and then we don't think that JPA is really where we want to be, um, taking a position of we didn't approve those things and you know could add to uh, aid our negotiations. I think ignoring it one way or the other is not an appropriate thing. Um, but that's that's my uh, my comments on that. But that's how this all came about. There was a window to refinance that would save the JPA <coughs> money, but they're putting more money on top of it that will actually make the cost of paying for these bonds for all residents uh, more expensive because they're getting the capital. Um, as, as opposed to getting it through tip fees, of course. Over a longer period. Uh, they're going to keep the term the same. Okay, but since they're refinancing it, it starts in that. Well, yeah, but yeah. the term is going to be coincidental to when the old bonds would have expired. So, so can I ask you a question? Yeah. You said that uh, said, well, the projects actually were written into the covenants. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the bond, you know, there's a thick document mm -hmm. that, you know, George and I have both been a party to mm -hmm. uh, that says specifically what projects they're going to do and how much is going to be allocated for that. Could they change that? For sure, I assume that they probably can, but I'm not in the, I'm not a bond marketeer. I don't know if you might be able to comment on it, Mike. I don't know. Also, there's the, the question of in the covenants, it said that if you if you're in on this and you the approving agencies guarantee that for the period of, until the bonds are retired, that our waste stream will go through this facility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, Bill. No matter what hall we choose. Yeah, but you know, Bill's Bill's feeling and and you know Joe, although the lawyer never gave us a, a letter saying so. Uh, they said, oh, well, if you leave the JPA, maybe you won't have to do that. But, you know, the, we didn't get a letter from an attorney saying that. Yeah. Um, my uh, uh, opinion is that we should be continuing this. It's because my decision may be different after we go through the process, and I may be more in favor. I'm not, <coughs> I'm not, I'm not opposed to the refinancing of the bonds because it makes sense, but it really doesn't matter what I think this has already been done. So therefore, <coughs> as far as the process is concerned, I'm making a decision. I'd make a more informed decision about where we are as a town at 
after the decisions made related to the SBWMA agreement. So I think at that point I'd be more willing to really discuss this as it's pertaining to us. Okay. Can I ask a question? Is that because you feel that you will be you would be uh, in a better negotiating uh, position? No. No, because I don't think that at this point I would be saying I'm in favor of this because it, I'm also saying I'm also in favor of the $20 million spending component, which is a future item which I may not be part of. Therefore, I shouldn't, I won't make that decision until I know where I'm going to be. But we will be part of it no matter what, even if we uh, exit the JPA. If we uh, exit the JPA, we're still not, obligated. But I still, at that point, may not be in favor of spending more money because I'm not there. The They're going to issue me either way. I mean, We're going to issue the bonds in June. Right. So putting it off, I don't think makes any sense. Yeah, personally. I don't, I don't think so either. I, yeah. So that's my opinion. Yeah, that's my opinion. Your, 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 your opinion is the values of all this. I understand that. WWF. Don't worry. Pylon. No, my, um, my thought is, is I agree with Carrie that the, after the $20 million bank refinance, that makes total, complete sense. We should indicate support for that. Um, I'm sorry, that's the original, the original not, not, not the we additional can't. 20. That's that additional 20. I, I would be inclined to, to oppose that for a couple of reasons, one of which is just the governance is so messed up. It's just, there's something broken where other people can make a decision that binds our residents for years into the future on, on a, you know, some of money that we're not going to really access. I get it, but okay, I don't, I don't like it. Don't it like it. Um, no. But so I think the, the voice we have is to say, is to say, go no at this point. Mm -hmm. And it may strengthen our arguments that we maybe have a slightly stronger legal position. Um, and, and you know, we don't have kind of a stronger uh, practice. But we're in May, and June is when we Well, they're going to issue it, but if we have a no vote, then we just say we, we didn't approve it. And we, did, and we didn't approve it in the time frame that you asked us to look at it and give you our approval, which is the end of it is today. I would concede to that position. That's, that's just not a concession. <laughs> that is your position. But it's not that that's that's I'll take, take, I'll take Mike's position now. So we file on Mike. So. We haven't heard from uh, Mr. Weissmayer. Well, well, I have one question. So I actually am the one that does have a question. So my understanding is this is a proposed $64 million bond, which will be used to retire $44.68 million of outstanding bonds. And then the difference will be used for new equipment purchases of about fifteen and a half million dollars for what they defined as MRF phase one and phase two. And that leaves if my math is right, that's fifty nine million dollars and leaves five million dollars. And then they're also proposing to fund a uh, OZE organics to to, 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 energy. to energy project, which would cost ten million dollars. Yes, but they only have five million left. But they've got so a one they've, already, they've already got a grant for that. Oh, they have a grant to make up the difference. Yes, yeah. I see. That's not stated in that. Mm -hmm. Well, they've been refining this. And they sent it to George, I think, a month ago. Um, but they guaranteed at our last finance committee meeting that regardless, whatever the rate is, you know, obviously the rate fluctuates and that determines how much money we can get. They are, they've set the interest rate and, um, and they are going to get $20 million above what it costs to retire the bonds. That is a fact. Are there any public comments from the public? Seeing none, we'll close the public comments. Come back. Have a discussion. So I would agree with the comments that Mike made. I think that it makes sense to. Uh, I, I actually think there's an argument <coughs> to see what happens in our RFP process. But it sounds like by then it's been have been refinanced. So if I were forced to take a position today, notwithstanding that I think it makes economic sense to retire the bonds and, and to refinance them at a lower cost, I would vote against it. Mm -hmm. Can I uh, have a question? <coughs> Can we um, take a position that we uh, approve 
approve the refinancing of the bonds and not approve the additional financing of the additional $20 million. Yeah. We could tell them that. I think that is a vote against doing it. Yeah, the person who voted against doing it, we say we would support the just refinancing the existing bond. And the original. Our alternate perspective. Right. Yeah, but we don't want to incur additional debt. Yeah, because it's going to follow us no matter what. It's smart to vote for it. That's going to be their position. You guys are such lawyers. Council, this is your uh, monthly Civic Center report, and today we're asking for uh, two decisions from the council. And as the mayor mentioned, uh, the one, and that's going to be regarding the uh, pathway, will be first, mm -hmm. and the other one with Wong Electric is when we'll take that second, and Councilmember Lepres can come in and have a discussion on that. Uh, so the first one, getting to is. Uh, Ch uh, change order. Uh, we got a change order proposal from Amoroso Construction per our request, and that is to put together a, about a six foot, and it could vary a little bit to five foot maybe, uh, uh, decomposed granite pathway along the fence line here, and then it would come daylight out at the temporary library buildings up back there. This is something that the community, I think, would, uh, especially on Ashfield, has been looking for. Because uh, what we heard loud and clear is when the site was closed down, they would have no access to the park from over here. We talked to Caltrans about maybe making it safer on El Camino. Uh, that was not very well received with any kind of help with that. So the idea was maybe to do this where it would not interfere with the construction. And uh, I talked to the neighbor, uh, Hushna over here, and she's very good and supports that. The one thing I do want to add is uh, Councilmember DeGolia brought to my attention is that in your staff report it says 46, 4 to 6 inches of decomposed granite. That was their original proposal from Amoroso, which then when we looked at it we rejected it because we don't need to have that. So as you can see in your attachment from Amoroso, it's actually 2 inches of DG with four inches of uh, recycled base rock with grid, geo grid fabric, fabric, which actually brings down the price quite a bit and is actually a better um, pathway for us. So we believe that would be a, a, an opportunity for people on their bikes and pedestrians to get from Asheville to Maple and into the park and beyond, whether riding your bikes or walking. Certainly no vehicles or anything like that would be going through that. So what we're asking council to do is uh, authorize the city manager to approve this cost proposal estimate number one from Amoroso. 
and that was the amount of sixteen thousand nine three hundred thirty three ninety four. However, with about a ten percent contingency, we're asking for authority for eighteen thousand uh, dollars for that approval. And um, I'd be happy to answer any questions the council might have. Any questions for Marty? Yeah. Marty, do you foresee um, situations like this coming up frequently no. as we go ahead? No. Because, you know, this is the only one we've heard from day one. There, you know. No, I have not heard of anything else like in this area. Okay. Just this. And every, the people I've talked to, and I know we have maybe one person that might want to speak to this, that this is something that they really support and, and yeah. would like to see. No, I, I think it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, are there other uh, unseen situations that we haven't thought about yeah. because when we yeah. went back to the contractors to try to get the cost down, which we did to get a good bid, right. you know, we said, you'll have the whole property secured, everybody was noticed about that, and so, right. you know, um, unfortunately. And what about Well, uh, Director Ovadi is actually working on a wayfinding program, um, and you might want to speak to that. Okay. Okay. So anyway, so no, we are doing we are doing a wayfinding program. There's a redwood that we're going to be going around over here, so it's not completely along the fence, but as, mu as much as possible. Okay, and it'll be, you know, obviously between this building and the neighbor's Correct. fence. Correct. It won't come up next to this building. No. But this building is going to be seismically retrofitted. Correct. And my impression was that there'd be a new foundation put down to this building. Um, I don't know. So, I'd have to look into that exactly. So my only concern there is if this building has to be raised up, I just want to make sure that you're comfortable in terms of the safety of people walking along close to this building in the course of this building right. having very substantial work done on it. Yeah, and, and just one thing I want to add to that. Now, I am comfortable and the contractor is comfortable. Otherwise, they would not support this because uh, for them, it's all about safety and liability. But there is actually going to be a construction fence on this side. Okay. So we're going to have the, the neighbor's fence that's there, and we're going to screen that. And then the construction fence so is actually going to be six feet away. Fence on, on this side Correct, of right. The so, so you're going to have so fences on two sides, pretty two much. Okay, exactly, yeah. Yeah. right. All right. Good question. Good question. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Sue Morales. I think the signage uh, risk to stay on top of it. Right. Uh, just that that was a question he said. Was a question. Are they going to add some signage well, to say please stay on the path? They're not going to be able to get off the pathway. It's going to be a. a they're going to be fenced in. Fenced in all the way. So. Yeah. so I have a question, Marty. Don't remind the fence. Did you, did you look but at if we need up, it, uh, you know, like a utility district so the people that are using it would pay for it? <laughs> No, I didn't get into that there. I mean, so. That comes up all the time. Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Are there any public comments? I, I get it. <coughs> Anybody else? Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask you a question. I have two thank yous today. Uh, Christine David, resident Atherton on Ashfield Road. Uh, first of all, Big thank you to the town council and the mayor for considering the walkway between Ashfield Road and Maple Lane. Uh, as Mike Lempris is learning very quickly, we've got quite an active block on Ashfield Road. We have um, during the day, the, during school days, we have anywhere from five to eight young people going to either Mellon Atherton High School or Ensenal Middle School on bicycles. Bless you. Um, we also have uh, five older lady walkers who either walk together or walk alone to the park uh, anywhere from three to five days a week and one does it seven days a week. 
Uh, we have a couple of um, professionals that actually live right next door that often bicycle to work, and sometimes you'll see them bicycling with their dogs beside them, so it's quite a scene, um, but they will be using the pathway. Um, we also have about, I think about 80% of the balance of our two sides of our street uh, own at least a dog. So there's just a natural, if not two dogs, so there's natural uh, use for the park and the walkway to and from the park. So we really wanna thank you all for considering this. Secondly, we really wanna thank you for Marty. Marty has <laughs> been an unbelievable conduit between this town, the project, and the neighborhood. I mean, upon introduction, he's made himself available to anyone who has any questions. He's quick to respond. He's honest and forthright with his answers. Um, he tells them like it is, and everybody has grown to greatly appreciate and trust this man, which makes my job as a neighbor a lot easier. Um, and I think it's gonna be just a blessing to have you and Robert moving forward on this project with the neighborhood and the town. So thank you for both. Thank you. Sir. Any other public comments? Okay, so we'll close public comments. I have a question though based on the comments. Um, I didn't bribe her. There's going to be a small <laughs> pathway. It would be dangerous for people to be riding a bike on it when there are potentially pedestrians on it. So uh, are we going to put some... It, if, if we find that there's issues, we'll, we'll put some appropriate we signage up. It would be a dangerous situation. Correct. No, we are, we're right. I agree. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That brings up the question of signage that several residents, uh, several council members have brought up. So if we need signage, we'll put the appropriate signage up. Um, and we can forward through the city manager the draft refinding plan. Are there any other no, questions on the signage? <laughs> Are you okay with it? Okay. I know George had something that he, a map. That he, yes. Yeah, that's you circulate that. A city and way office prepared by Robert, uh, addressing all of the current wayfinding sign that's out and about, replacing that with uh, some other temporary signage in the same song style and everything, but at entirely different locations for the most part, because buildings are moving around. Uh, in addition to those signs, as Marty indicated, we can, based on some of the comments and feedback here, address some signage on the path itself. Any other questions? Okay, can we bring in Michael? Mayor, while we're waiting for Councilmember Lump first, I just want to sum it up, coming key dates uh, that's in your staff report. As the city man manager mentioned today, the first set of trailers came in, and uh, that was interesting how that all happened, but very successful. And next Wednesday, the other set will come in. So the set that came in today were for the permit and building planning. And the next few days are going to be, be, be uh, put up on uh, uh, blocks and then stabilized and put, you know start putting some for occupation uh, what we'll, we'll be doing so, that uh, so is the next tranche is that going to come in at the appropriate time or is it going to come in the well you know they're coming from Livermore and today with the weather and the traffic associated uh, it just took them a lot longer to get here because this these are big things coming down the road and I don't know how they do it personally because that looks like a real challenge um, but they're professionals in we're going to hope that they come earlier next week. They were supposed to come, as the city manager said, between 6 and 6.30. I was out there waiting for them, but then, of course, that didn't happen. Uh, next week, they're going to be coming with the next set of three, and I'm going to see if we can get them to come at the appropriate time. Um, but again, you know, there's, there's situations that come up that maybe prevent that, but we'll see what we can do, you know. Um, also, one of the things next Tuesday here in these council chambers, we're going to have a community meeting with, the, with everybody in this area here, uh, and that's going to be at 5:30, and that's with the contractor and myself to get let everybody know what's coming. It's going to be a you know four to six week look ahead uh, of what things are they're going to be seeing and expecting that happen, and of course everybody's welcome to that. 
but it's really to let everybody that's immediately in this area know what's be coming here uh, within the next few weeks. And we hope that gets well attended for that. Um, again, the move in for admin and the uh, building planning people is at the end of the month with uh, business to open on June 4th, Tuesday, June 4th, with the new trailers and the operations down there. In the week of June 3rd is when Amoroso, and you probably already see some work going on here, tree protection plans, and they're doing photographic evidence. You're going to make Mr. Lempers leave the room again. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, so the rest is in your, rest is in your staff report. Right. So moving on to the other item that we would like to have council's uh, consideration on, and that's regarding Wong Electric. They provided us with a proposal uh, to provide all the electrical services for the temporary trailers in the park. And their proposal was for 69285 and Wong Electric's the ones that did the work at the temporary trailers over here. And as it said in your staff report, that work was 34175 However, the park has much more challenges with trees, and there are six trailers, not four. And there's just many other issues there with the electrical services that were needed to be brought in to provide the power for the trailers there versus the over here. They were able to just drop a line from Maple into the building, so it was a lot simpler uh, progress. So we would like to have council's approval to authorize the city manager to uh, approve this agreement with Long Electric to do that work necessary for uh, the electrical service at the park, the temporary trailers. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Again, you forgot to mention, but it's in your staff report. This is one of those costs that's also part of or contemplated in the cost model. Right. Future use for the equipment? No, for the electricity. Uh, the, all the electrical conduits and things that we're bringing in for the trailers. Um, I'm not sure about that. It would just have to be read down. Well, let me, let me it's ask a question in a different way. Is the power that's going to uh, be provided to the trailers coming from the PG&E lines? Correct. Mm -hmm. the yeah, they have to upsize their transformer. And we have actually three poles, so it's overhead through the trees and coming down to the trailers. And, and so, the, so that would make sense to me that if we're bringing that, that additional power into the park, mm -hmm. there may be a use for that power in the future. It, it, it could be. I, I have not looked Sorry, into that. Don't, don't we have plans to put in uh, electrical, charge, electrical car charging stations in the park? Well, we really should, yes. We possibly yeah. work with that. It yeah. possibly could, yeah. yeah. I, I haven't, I have myself have not looked into that, Council yeah. Mertz. I think there's a lot of opportunities once these trailers are taken out. So it's too bad that uh, uh, Dick Moore, uh, I don't know if all of you remember Dick Moore, Richard Moore, who had once been a chief of police as well as, well, he did, but he also lived across the street of, on Watkins at Burns. But when they needed some electricity to the park, he and I think Bill Lively went out and just, uh, you know, Jerry rigged some so, <laughs> conduit and brought it over. And I think it was <coughs> fire up the main house for a little bit. But uh, well, so that Jamie's was a, here. I know, that was a different day and yeah. time, don't so you think? So Marty really has to get up and get you know, <laughs> yeah. go. Right, 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 Marty, right. come on. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. I'm trying. He doesn't like the little left. There we go. I'm just I just because we were on the subject. I believe these are drop lines. We're not trenching lines, so it won't impact charging stations because it would be a lot more expensive to trench. Right. Okay, so yeah. just so in, we don't get confused that this is an easy fix to do charging station. Actually, we change the whole bid structure because they'd have to trench. So yeah, we're, we're not trenching because there's the tree issues and it'd actually be much more expensive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We can't, we can't so th this is really temporary power. Uh, yeah, but once you're, up, excuse me, once, once you're upgrading, you know, the power source, mm -hmm. then 
Absolutely, at the street, at the right. there, right. that that, that actually would be house. helpful in future uses that the park might have. Yeah. But as Councilmember Wee said, is it's overhead temporary power coming to the trailers. But everything that PG&E is doing at the street and our contractor, that'll stay there. Okay. So, so the question I have is, on the uh, proposal from Long Electric, there's this item that says provide power for owner furnished generators. Right. What is that? Mean? We're going to have a backup a emergency generator. Is part of that for an EOC, a temporary potential EOC for. We have no EOC in this. No, but the EOC is going to be the pavilion, right? Uh, we, we talked about putting it in the pavilion, but yeah. re upgrading the power at the pavilion was going to be too expensive. Uh, so using the trailers on a temporary basis made more sense. And yeah, we're going to be leasing a generator for that.
people are still saying, look, give us local control. You know, you can't you can't take away our revenue sources. You can't dictate how our communities are going to be. You don't understand what those are, and so. And the impacts on infrastructure, if you right. require all of this, uh, you know, building throughout uh, a, a town, not just Atherton, but I mean, you know, this massive amount of uh, new housing without helping those cities and jurisdictions pay for the infrastructure, like schools and sewers and, you know, other services. Yeah. So, um, this is... So this is, we're going to have a case. This is the last meeting of the City Council in this Chambers. Uh, next meeting in June, our study session, and our next uh, regularly scheduled Council meeting will be at the park in our in, in the Jennings Pavilion. We have cake. Okay, motion to adjourn. Thank you. Good picture.